Hi, Sipo. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Bongani Kanyile. I am a labor lawyer. I'm a director of my own practice. I, I'm also a business commentator. That seems to be, I um, seem to be thrust in that level. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to be here as well. Thank you, Bongani. So, um, I mean, obviously we're buzzing with all kinds of questions. And I think the very first question one would want to ask is, what is this new normal? And what does it mean for yeah. business? I will, I will start off by saying, let me resist the urge to, you know, to be a prophet of doom, as tempting as it is, and, and try and, 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 and paint at the end of this and make a positive, you know, picture of what our economy will look like. So I want to actually deal with the diagnosis and prognosis, uh, and perhaps a preamble to, to, to my answer to your question, Sipo, is to put a context of our economy uh, during this debacle. And because we know it's common cause that the South African economy was already on ICU when COVID-19 struck us. So it's not that we just had a, a turn, a sudden turn. We were heading a particular direction, which um, really adding the port of, um, adding the mix of COVID-19 into this cauldron um, really catapulted us to this porous state we're in. And, and I can confirm this because during the, the lockdown weekend, the first weekend of the lockdown, we were downgraded by a rating company um, to junk status. And, and that tarnished our reputation as a preferred investment destination. And that's largely due to lack of a reliable power supply inter alia that we experience in South Africa. Now, to add into that volatile economy of COVID-19, uh, I want to submit as early as now that it will not be business as usual. Business as we know it is not, is not going to happen. Um, it will change. And therefore, companies must dev devise a lockdown strategy. It's very important because we are on, on level four. Uh, we'll go to level three. Who knows where level one is going to be? So talks around the strategy should be happening in the boardrooms or virtual boardrooms of companies. Um, to avoid hemorrhaging of jobs, uh, they must strive that's business, to use technology to augment people, um, not to replace them. And I say this because as a labor lawyer, I'm in the forefront of retrenchments. Um, either I'm helping to initiate them. Uh, today, I could be doing that tomorrow. I'm helping salvaging a job. That's part of what I do. So, so, so I see the first hand of, of this pandemic to our business and to the employees and, and, and the society at large. And some companies didn't have to wait for, for, for lockdown to come into effect. Um, at the announcement by the president that we are going on lockdown, already section 1893 notices were being handed to, to employees already being retrenched, being retrenched and retrenchments were taking place virtually. And, and, and I noticed over this three, four week period that the companies that um, have gone digital are actually coping much better. Uh, they're more resilient to, to COVID-19 as opposed to those that have not embraced, they're still sussing out whether can they operate digitally. And, and, and the truth of the matter, and all of, all of us probably can attest to this, is that no, no sector has been left unaffected by, by COVID-19. Um, it has affected everybody and, and every sector. We're seeing a drop in productivity in the mines, which is, which is a major director, direct contributor to the GDP. And we are also seeing also indirect contribution being affected, such as the retailers who are unable to pay their rentals. Uh, there's, there's, there's job carnage in manufacturing, in logistics, in, in retail. And so I've said the other day that in South Africa, we're not going to experience uh, many loss of lives like we're seeing in the States. But what we are going to experience is a lot of businesses folding because of a failure to innovate, to, to, to rise up to the challenge of COVID-19, to, to, to say, to lift your hand up and say, I'm responding digitally because we're gonna have limited uh, physical context. Um, we see that in, in the durations, the, the, the sectors around the skills strategies in the country, we could lose academic care. That speaks to, 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 to educational institutions not being able to function. The tourism is very, industry is very negatively affected. Uh, so what's gonna happen after this? So the pundits and commentators of the economy have said, 
we're going to experience a global recession and, and, and maybe let's look at it from there. What will we do uh, in the advent of a global recession, which is actually being pundited post COVID-19? The business that will, 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 will survive this period is a business that have made plans, um, taking into account the possibility of a global um, recession as it were. Airlines have suffered the most um, there's, there's retrenchment happening at the SAA, as we know it, there, there's court battles around that. Um, and that tells you that even professions traditionally that are known to have job security, such as the one I am in, which is the legal profession, uh, has also been affected. Somebody opined, I think he's from America, who said, you know you're in trouble when even lawyers are getting retrenched. That's, that's where we are. Um, so no one is really, really safe. Um, so what will change then? What will be this new normal, uh, Sipogazi? Just to, to grab uh, the bull by its proverbial horn. I'm, I'm going to make a few submissions how I think this normal um, will actually be. There will be a cultural and behavioral shift. Uh, that's already happening. Um, you know, if you're a person that likes, that's very expressive like myself, you like to feel another human being, you like to shake hands, you like to hug. Um, in the workplace, you are more compassionate. Well, that's not gonna happen now. Uh, it's gonna change. The way we interact with colleagues, the way we inter interact with clients is going to change. Uh, we are now talking here virtually, everyone is in their own safe space. That's a new way of doing business. That's a way of consulting. Uh, I've, I've been a reluctant 4IR practitioner, if I can call myself that, because I didn't like, I didn't feel I can effectively communicate digitally than if you see me in person. But if my business is going to survive uh, this period, this epoch, I I'm gonna have to learn to, to consult uh, effectively, even online. Um, and also, quite interestingly, I did a first case last week in court where I, I still had to, regrettably, had to wear the robe and be in my study and appear in front of the judge and not forget the court's etiquette. And, and, and as I spoke to the judge, we used my lord or my lady, and this was a male judge, I had to say, can you hear me, my lord? Can you hear me, my lord? I can't see you, my Lord. And, and the neighbor rushed into my aid thinking, this guy is in a fervent prayer and I need to stand the gap and assist him. Uh, you know, so, so, but that's the new normal. Um, we're not gonna go around <laughs> flaunting our robes uh, and big bags. This is going to, we have to adjust, that's a profession. Um, you know, and, 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 and there'll be a lot of emphasis, and I think Rafilo can speak much better and coherently about this than I can, but there'll be a lot of emphasis on, on health and safety measures in the workplace. We know that, that um, you know, the Occupational Health Act now comes to the fore. Now employees have to be safe. We know that the regulation 11E that talks about sanitizer, talks about masks. So, so there's a premium, a premium that's placed a lot on health and safety in the workplace. Companies need to focus on that. Companies need to make a budget on that. And, and uh, um, companies have to embrace working remotely. I love having team meetings, sitting down with my staff, uh, engaging them, finding out how they are before we get to the business of the day. Uh, that's, that's not happening. Where they are, I need to make sure, trying to fight the battles of data and at time, make sure that I finish my agenda and we get on with it. You know, Those are the struggles of entrepreneurs. Sectors like transportation, storage, warehouse, and companies. Um, those sectors that, that enable digital in, in, um, information, entertainment, such as work and office system, those ones will, will fare better. I submit, I think those ones that, that have made themselves, that have placed themselves at the heart of the economic, rather uh, information technology will really survive this. And, and the businesses that, and industries that depend on people's behavior, like travel, hotels and airlines, as well as retailers, will not bounce back anytime soon. Uh, if there was a year I, I was hoping that we won't have COVID-19, would have been 2020. I had a whole lot of trips that I, that I had, uh, especially in May. Unfortunately, that's canceled. Um, but that tells you that that's, uh, there's an industry that has lost out on just that particular travel. Yeah. Thank you very much, Wangani. We have a question from Lindsay yes. who would like to know, are high court cases happening at the moment? Something we'd probably all be interested in finding out. 
Yes, they are. Um, they are happening. What the courts are doing, they are entertaining what you call urgent matters, matters that have to do with uh, the, the pandemic itself. They're also entertaining matters of, of maintenance uh, and domestic issues um, like, like domestic violence. Those matters are happening. Um, rarely labor law matters, but matters that have to do with urgent retrenchments, um, the courts are entertaining. So yes, the courts are really functioning but at a limited, limited basis. Great, thank you very much. Are there any other questions, Trish, that you want to refer to Bongani before we move on to the next speaker? Um, yes, please. There's someone that's asked me about government help for small businesses and informal businesses, but I think this is a conversation all on its own. So what we can maybe do, it's up to you, Bongani, but maybe we can yeah. after this, you know, reply to people in more detail and really try and help them out. What's your thoughts? Yeah, no, no, I agree. At, the, at this point, I, I just want to end off by saying maybe what should be done practically before the next speaker speaks uh, is that companies would have to really uh, review their business plans uh, and business models. They need to be innovative. They need to look at the men in which they trade, whether it will be geared for this period. Uh, I would say a business plan maybe of 12 to 18 months will be appropriate, uh, maybe to see how resilient your company can be. We need to review supply chain uh, policies and consider local supplies. I mean, other countries now, we can't go to China, we can't go to the States. Uh, so I think the Department of Treasury, I'm glad there's the ANC involved in the initiative. Uh, here, here, they, they, they need to be the Treasury that's spearheading uh, the whole logistics uh, local logistics, as it were. And then businesses must review their HR policies uh, from a disciplinary code. The workplace is going to change in its definition. You're no longer be in the office. The workplace must be defined to even mean the comfort of your home. It doesn't mean a holiday. There should be certainty as to what do I do uh, between eight to five when I'm at home in company hours, so to speak. Businesses have to assess remote working strategies. They must uh, prepare fully the compliance with Poppy Act, the Protection of Personal Information Act. It's gonna be, it's gonna come to the fore now because how we communicate digitally, there are issues of personal information that uh, the owners on the companies to really protect. And so we need to develop a policy around that. Um, yeah, thank you so much.